You know, today we're up on Lake Vermilion. You know, we filmed up here a lot over the years, primarily for walleyes and muskies, but Nick and I are on a little bit of a different mission. We're actually hunting one of our favorite fish species, and that's bass, specifically smallmouth, but we could potentially catch some largemouth too. But what we're gonna share with you is early season strategies and how to find bass on these big lakes like this. It's sort of in interesting. Uh, Verm Lake Vermilion actually has a lot of smallmouth bass in it. Yeah, there's a lot of water to cover, but you know, if you can dial it into a few things, you can find them a lot quicker, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you notice how I have my map set up initially to find fish. You know, right now that it's early season, we expect these fish to be moving into the shallow bays to spawn in the not so distant future. But when I look at my menu, what I did is I actually set my chart up and I have a, my depth highlight range, which is the green at six foot with a variance of two foot, so it's down to eight foot. Anything shallower than eight foot is green. And then I actually have my uh, shallow water highlight at five foot, and that's probably where they're gonna be spawning on the shallow ro uh, rocks as well as uh, any type of isolated bulrushes. But when I zoom the map out here, you'll notice what happens, and this is what's really key for early season fishing. Look at how all the, the shallow, big shallow flat bays and the rock piles, the shallow water, the five foot zones actually light up in red. And you see that, you know what I mean? And I can, we're gonna hopscotch these shallow water bays, these big flat shallow basins, looking for smallmouth bass and largemouth bass in the backs of these basins. But you can see how quickly that really sort of cuts your time down really quickly. You know, you get on these really big bodies of water like Vermilion here, and the key is, is to find, to get into where the clouds of fish are, you know, and throughout the season, these fish make pretty dynamic movement. Every different species of fish do, do that. Walleyes, bass, muskies, uh, bass, even the crappies in here make pretty dynamic seasonal movements. But what the mapping does is really speeds that fish finding process. And to initially start the hunt, we have to fine tune it with presentation. Okay, we ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. What that really enables us to do is cover a lot of water real quickly. You know, understanding this basis of uh, horizontal baits or uh, chase baits, high speed lures that enable you to cover water is really key to initially find out where these schools of fish are. One thing that's really important always at this time of the year is the fact that the water is warming up. Actually, it's, we've actually had a really pretty cold spring. This is the first couple of really warm days that we've had in the activity level of the fish at this time of the year. As general rule is, the, after, the afternoon bite's gonna be a lot better than the morning bite. You know, the fish actually move up, that water temperature warms up three, four, or five degrees throughout the course of the day. You get in these, that's why these big shallow bays are so key because these darker water, darker bottom, that these areas warm up the first they initially move in here, these fish are actually just feeding before they spawn and it could be a, you know, a week or two or before they actually start to spawn. There's one, big one. Wow. Boy, they, look at that, how calm they are. That's how, that water temperature is just cool. Oh, boy, look at that. Wow, look at the color of that thing. Boy, you see. Come here, buddy. Out there, there you go. 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 Ooh. There you go. Perfectly perched. It's a nice fish. Come here, buddy. Boy, the, that's, that water temperature is so cold, the fish are really pretty inactive, but you can see how fat she is. These fish are just coming in from their wintering areas. We'll get her back in the water. A little chunk. Boy, look at the color on there uh, on that fish. It's real pretty red. Come here, buddy. Look at that. That's not like a, some Come sort down. of spawning wound or anything. Oop, there's one little guy. There you go. Fat little guy. Boy, it's unbelievable how that, you know, that water is actually surprisingly warm, but it, the way these fish are acting, they're just like, they're really super lethargic. Come here, buddy. Ooh, he's a fat little tanker. Ooh. Come here, buddy. Boy, I'd like to find one that was about, look at that thing. Beautiful fish, though. Look at the color of that thing. I like to find one about four years older than that. Yeah. You can see the boulders up here. Yeah, nice stuff. 
little bit later in the afternoon, we'll come back through here. It'll be interesting oh, how many fish are up on word. these exact same spots. <laughs> I don't know. A large mouth. Looks like a large mouth to me. I dropped the bait right on his head, head apparently. The way he slurped up on it. No, it was a large. Yeah, a little smally. Yeah. Oop, there's one. Ooh. That might be a little sportier one, we'll see. Oh. Well, I'm a willing and prepared net man, just in case it is sporty. Huh. Giving you a good run for your money. Yeah, nice net. Just no, another. Just a... I got him. That's yeah. all right. Well, we're on a pattern really pretty quickly. That's sort of interesting. I mean, that's what I mean where you go in there. It's what mapping today, you know, you go figure it out. You can go look on the map and identify spots. You know, I've never fished this spot before. I heard any of this air area. I've fished a lot in here for muskies and walleyes. I've never really fished for bass that much in Vermilion. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh. But we're catching some. You know, in each one of these spots, I was a little bit laid out different. This first spot we pulled up on is actually a lot of a big, uh, sort of a rock saddle between an island and an, uh, in a shore point. And the tops of these flats are probably, you know, three to four foot deep. And that's why we're running just these uh, shallow lipped shadows. But the thing is, is one thing that's really key about this is depending, you know, because these fish can be utilized a variety of different habitats in these uh, lakes. They can be on bulrushes, and then we got some swim jigs or topwater baits around those areas. You know, each uh, type of cover option really could dictate the best presentation or the best lures for that area. But these shallow rocks, one thing when you look at like jerk baits are so effective for this because the water's still sort of cold and those fish are inactive. We can fish the bait pretty quickly, but then you can pause it, you know, and let it sit there for a period of time. Right now that water temperature, these fish are still pretty inactive and they need the, the bait to be paused for a period of time to get them to bite. You know, you're jacking the bait and then you just let it sit, let it sit, let it sit. <laughs> dependent on the attitude of the fish. Sometimes you have to let it sit in really cold water conditions. You know, you'll have to let it sit five, six, seven seconds in a spot before to get the fish to bite it. You know, it's a little deceiving. You get into these big shallow bays like this and uh, you'll see the rocks all over on the shoreline, like on Vermilion's got this, you know, it's a shield lake and there's rocks everywhere. But what's really more important is to find like isolated boulders and scatter them hard bottom points in anywhere from two to as probably as deep as 10 or 15 foot of water. And so when we're driving along and into these bays, we're, we have both side imagery in the back of the boat. And then I actually have a 360 in the front of the boat. And you can actually see where these hard bottom points stick out. And you can tell right away when the habitat is, ru is right. As soon as you see those hard bottom bo isolated boulders scattered out, scattered out on these flats, a lot of times that's where those fish are sitting. And the bigger the spots, the better they are, no question about it. You know, when you look at it, it actually it's surprising that a lot of these bottoms in these back ends of these bays is all sand and mud. And where you find these isolated hard bottom spots, that's the real, the best habitat for the smallmouths. Yeah, and it's actually really nice sitting here in the back of the boat too because the transducer that goes to that unit right there is right here and it's shooting directly out. So as we're going by, I can actually see rocks and I know exactly where they are, rocks and wood, which I've actually had a couple of fish so far today where I've actually seen a log next to a big rock, threw directly to it and caught a fish. So it's an awesome tool and it's right there. I can see it right there as I'm, as I'm reeling and casting. Here's a quick example you can see. That right there is a log. Those are small rocks. That's a bigger boulder right there. And the light color right here, whenever it's light, that means it's a hard bottom. And then the darker stuff is a soft bottom. So here's a hard to soft transition and a bunch of cover all over the place. There's another log right there. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking for right now.
fast. See, now we're starting to get on something. Whoa. That's the first bass I've caught on an, a topper this year. You know, we were talking about different types of like search baits. You know, we're jerk bait on the rocks, but we got into a little bit of like a bulrush patch here where it transitions from rocks into here. And at some point in time, a lot of these bass are gonna be actually up in those bulrushes in a, uh, a topwater bait is another, you know, pretty fast moving bait that you can, again, you can move the bait and kill it, let it sit there for a period of time to get the fish to bite it. Not a big one, but in the next week or so, you could pull up in these bulrushes and smoke big ones doing this, which is about as fun as it gets. I can guarantee you that. Oh, there's a, you see that one? That's a big one. Oh, look Ooh. at that. Look at the size Ooh. of that one. See that big? That's yeah, a, it's I like a four him. pounder. He took a swipe at you. You might still get him here. Oh, oh a hat or two. And that was her again. One thing that's really important is, you know, like right now I'm in about two foot of water and these fish can get extraordinarily shallow at times, particularly really early season because they're really seeking out that warm water. And, you know, a lot of people wouldn't, you know, think that the fish are so far back up on these flats, but they do. And that's where you get in the shallow or really super shallow water that it's even for the, uh, shallow shadow wrap which you know runs at about you know two three feet down that that's too deep but the thing is is you still have to you know let the bit we're using the popper just let it sit there for a period of time then pop 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 but even this couple of fish we've seen they move up on it really super slow so you got to let it sit there for a period of time to get the fish to bite them by the end of the day, it could be a different story. They could be hitting these pr pretty good. Good. It's this is the that's the first topwater fish I've seen this year, which I'm really liking. That. Oops, there we. Go. That's a good one. Yep, that's a good fish. Wow. Yep. Boy, look at it. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. Just a dig deep digger. Yeah. Fights hard. <laughs> wow. Oh, he's just hooked. Kind of funny. Got him sn snagged on the back. On his back, yep. Uh, I was gonna say. Ooh, watch there that, so when that hook comes out, it doesn't go into your hand. Yeah, that would be a, ideal. An aggravation. All right. <laughs> this is just turning into a disaster. I won't get so fancy. Rod in right hand. Can't get his nose down because of where he's hooked. That's a nice one. Yeah. Chunky one. Chunky little one. That was nowhere near the mouth. I like the consistency of our pattern. It seems to be working pretty good. Yeah. You know. No, I agree. Little shadow, Smalley. Free the fighter. Yeah, just a little rock run here. Just seems like, seems like they're just kind of all over this, this area of the lake. Well, that's the thing is, is what you're trying to do and using these higher speed baits, just trying to figure out to get into the cloud of fish. They yeah. move in great big schools. This time of year, I mean, they're spread out all over you know, some of them are up, some of them are still down. But yeah, there's, they're spread out. They're really not congregated this time of year. So I search baits like jerk baits and swim baits and even topwater baits can be really good. You know, th these lakes are so vast. And even though the habitat looks 
right there can look really right. There's, you know, at any one given point in time because these fish are moving around seasonally, there's a lot of big sections of the water where there are no fish, which is an aggravation, you know. And that's why these more high speed search baits. And once we've isolated like what we've been doing this morning, and we've isolated a number of different spots where there's bass on them, we can go back to those spots, uh, you know, later in the afternoon and fish more slower, you know, whether it be, you know, fishing senkos and tubes and dragging baits really slowly on the bottom, but at least you know that there are fish in that area. But if we were to fish, be fishing that way with those baits, it takes so long to find the fish. That's where these high speed lures are so critical to have in your arsenal, you know, at all different depth levels, not only from top water, jerk bait mid range, deeper jerk baits, secondary range, to a rattle bait that I could be fishing down in, you know, eight to 15 foot of water if necessary. There's three really, really particularly important types of habitat. You see that fish right on the bank, or was that a turtle? But uh, rocks, obviously, like what we've been throwing the jerk baits on, bulrushes like this can be our pencil weeds, and then the other one that a lot of fish can actually intermittently sit on is, is like developing red cabbage. And you'll find that's generally scattered out in a little bit deeper water, three to four foot of water. And if you can find red cabbages that is around deeper water around those isolated rock piles, that's money type of spot. Oop, there's one. There's a fish on my bait. I suspect it's a I bat. I got one too. Do you? Yep, double up. Nice. He's shallow. There we go. Mr. Frisky, how about your size? Mine is a... I think mine might be better. A little bit chunk, a little bit of a chunk. Really good population of fish that look like that in here. Good for action. Get to pop that one with us. Look how pretty these things are. Aren't they pretty? I mean, look at how red that thing is. It's just brilliant, beautiful fish. You gonna need a net on that little runt or what do you got going? Ooh, oh, that's yeah. A, that's there you go. One. That's a big boy there. Oop, easy. Yeah, I'll take easy. a net. Easy. Looks like easy. you have that one choke pretty good as long as I keep it tight here. Yeah, oh, there, you go. there we go. That's one of the right ones. There you go. Nice. Pretty decent one. Yeah. It's ready to go. One thing that's really important about these early season fish it's your willingness to move. We were over here last night for a little bit when we got into town and we actually caught a few fish, but they were all out on the tip of this point, out in deeper water. Come back the next day, it still will stay warm over the night. We come back in here and now we're catching fish farther back into the bay. Into the bay. So these fish really wanna come in. And the thing is they can move extraordinarily quickly. It's sort of interesting in the fact that you could fish this bay and say there's no fish in the morning and you come back here in the afternoon and it could be loaded, literally. That's how fast these fish are, are can be moving. Oop, oh, there's, there's a good one there. Wow. Nope. Nope, he's not that, he's not that big. Boy, it's sort of interesting, that guy there, there's so, <laughs> They're so lethargic, that fish. I didn't even see the, all I saw, the bait just disappeared. You know what I mean? It didn't come up and crunch on the bait. He just came, just popped up and the bait just went down like a, like a float. There we go. Yeah. Healthy looking fish though. Water temperature's creeping up to 65 in the back of here. Notice how there's, there's we, we, we fished this yesterday. And we never caught any fish up all the way up in here, but it goes to, they're moving. Activity level of the fish. You know, I'm up here on Vermilion where 
I have sort of a twofold mission here to do an early season bass piece, but also I fish this other tournament tour called the uh, Classic Bass Champions Tour. And it's a lot of uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin's uh, really good anglers, and it's sort of an MLF format on Lake Vermilion in about a month and a half. So this gives me a, a pretty good idea. I've been sort of running all over the lake. Give me a little bit of an idea what the population of both largemouth and smallmouth will be by the end of the next couple of days of fishing. What does the population look like? I'm liking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty ha happy with the smallmouth population. Anyway, I will, we'll have to do a little bit of investigation on the uh, the largemouths, but they say that there's a lot more largemouths on the west side of the lake, and there would be probably pretty pretty good reason. I fish the west side of the lake quite a bit, Wakeham Up Bay area, uh, Norwegian uh, Bay, and Niles Bay, and the reason being there's a lot more big weed beds in that area, so it makes sense that there would be a lot more largemouths in that section of the lake. You know, it's really interesting. I love to go on the Minnesota DNR's website, look at uh, netting results and whatnot, and getting the report from the different lakes, and on Lake Vermilion, it was super interesting. They actually made a note in the notes section that the larger fish, the, or excuse me, the larger smallmouth bass out on the east side of the lake over here. Dad just talked about how the west side of the lake has the, the weeds and more largemouth bass, but the east side has the big bronze backs. And that's, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, you know, it's sort of fun. Last night we were going out to eat and one of the locals, he actually said that he moved up here 12 years ago because of the musky, the musky fishing. He's a big musky guy. And uh, yeah, right now it's, whoop, there's whoop, a good there one. There you go. Oh, wow, there. <laughs> oh, that's a better one. Yeah. Boy, look at that. We got a, we got a, we got a watchdog watching for watching the bass. <laughs> <That's a nice one. laughs> yeah, you get the bronze backs like this and. Here, I'll, I'll just let hand land him, Nick. He's, he's, he's hooked pretty good, I think I just, Rather than throw him in a net, in a net the way I got this guy, I think I can wrangle this guy up here. Come here, buddy. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Come here, buddy. Wow. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. I'm really liking nice. they're getting on the top water routine. That's absolutely my fav favorite. You know, we've been coming up here for years, the last couple of years, actually filming for big muskies and walleyes. And this is the first time I've actually bass fished up here for many, many years. And it's sort of interesting. Boy, there's a fabulous smallmouth bass and largemouth bass population in this lake. You might be the first guy to catch a smallie on topwater on Vermilion this year. Hopefully it's not my last. <laughs> There's oh, another there one. There, there's another wow, one. Wow, Dad, I, I may need to switch to no, top water No, no. <laughs> what? I'm just you. You, I only have one X pop in the boat. Oh, well, it might what? be my X pop. Sorry, the end Nick. Of this. Nope. <laughs> uh uh. You're front boating me now. I know, that's good. <laughs> Come here. Come here, buddy. Low 50s, but now it's mid 60s in this back bay right here. Things change really quick. There we go. Come here, buddy. The thing is, is you can actually even tell by the activity level of the fish, the way they're hitting these baits, the top, whether you're, we're fishing the top water bait or the jerk bait, the bait absolutely has to be still most of the time to get a bite. The bait isn't moving, you know what I mean? The fish, the bait is just sitting there in a fixed position to get them to bite on it. Oop, there's another Rick. one. Oh, wow. There you go. Man, wow, these boys are really, starting to get with serious. the program. What's that? This is serious. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Eck. Can you any help with that guy? What's really so cool ab about Lake Vermilion is all the different bites that are available. Nick and I were discussing this last night over dinner. You know, we're up here fishing for bass right now. But a couple of years ago, I came up here with a, a buddy of mine that guides up here, Josh Brabowski, and we shot a piece on open water uh, musky fishing, you know, and catching them suspended over open, deep water. But you know what I mean? There's just so much, the, the quality of the fishing is so good. It's amazing. And my buddy's got one on. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I do. Finally, you just, you had to talk for a couple seconds to give me a, 
to give me a moment. For some reason you just grab, there's PM. You just grab them like this and it's like, it just doesn't want to be lipped. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of turning into a bronze back smash fest here. But yeah, like dad was saying, incredible musky fishery. We were actually out to eat. I might need a player. Out to eat last night talking to one of the locals. And the only reason why he's a local is because he moved here. There we go. He moved here 12 years ago because he's such a big musky fan. And yeah, I was actually up here a couple years ago too with my buddy, my buddy Doug, chasing that open water bite. And it's sort of interesting right now, we've kind of been fishing around up in the shallows looking for bass. And actually, uh, so far we've seen like 15 muskies swimming up shallow. Uh, quite a few smaller ones, stalkers, but also a couple, I would say that were in the mid forties, no giants, but some mid forties, really, really big muskies. And musky season is opening here in like a week or so. I can tell you one thing, the boys are gonna be up here chasing muskies and they're gonna catch some big ones too. Oh, nope, I got them pinned wrong. Maybe not. <laughs> Boy, these boys. Oh, not or not. He got a real, a real buster crab tree here. <laughs> this guy here. Not only that, I got him sort of, he's sort of, sort of hung sideways. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh. Okay, come here. Look at that guy. Not a giant, but a toughie. I can guarantee you that. Come here, buddy. Come here. Yeah, there we go. Another topwater animal. You know, today bass fishing is so presentation specific. And what I mean by that is, you know, just the right rod, reel, and line for the situation. Look at that guy there, a real chunk and a half, isn't he? Beautiful fish. Real fatty. Really? Oh boy, there's more where that one came from. You know, today bass fishing is so presentation specific. Actually, all, all fishing is. But for topwater fishing like this, the right rod and reel for me is a, uh, this is a, a St. Croix Legend X. Seven foot, medium power, fast action. Now you'll ask us, well, why would you want a, uh, you know, a real fast action rod. One of the biggest things is casting accuracy. A lot of times we're up on these great big shallow flats and I have to make really super long accurate casts, whether it be to an isolated boulder clump or a, uh, the tip of a bulrush pile or a, any type of uh, isolated cover. The thing is, is also is the, when you hook and land the fish, that's what the medium power comes in. The fast action really helps you cast really super accurately. The medium power, meaning where the rod breaks, is sort of somewhat softer. And with any type of treble hook bait like this, I like that medium power. It gives you, a, affords you just a little bit more forgiveness when the fish hits the bait. You know, and once you hook them, to keep them uh, hooked is the, is the real key. You know, as far as the reel goes, I have this, uh, this is a Daiwa Zillion 7.3 to one, real fast action reel. The reason being for that real fast action reel, a lot of times when you're topwater fishing like this, you're fishing with a lot of slack line. Like right now, I have three foot of slack line and in, in between me and the bait, so when the fish hits it, that fast action reel affords me to, to pick up and set the hook real quickly on the fish. Line, I got the suffix advanced monofilament. This is a 14 pound test. I prefer that above braid or floral. It just fishes the bait really right. You make a really long, accurate cast. But the thing is, a lot of times you're making super long casts and a lot of times I'll be hooking them way up there and you want to be able to cast that way because a lot of times like I'm in, you know, one, two foot of water and the flats goes farther back and you're casting to really specific things. There we go. Got him. Come back. Big one. Smally. Looks like a good one. Yep. Probably. It's got some spunk. <laughs> what size? 
a moderate. She wants to land over here. Perfect. Yeah, you know, this is a... Uh, there's other places, I would say right now, in the Midwest that are getting a lot of pub for smallmouth fishing. Lake Vermilion is not one of those, but maybe it should be. I mean, this is a lot of fun. It's kind of fun jerk baiting and topwater, smallmouth and vermilion. <laughs>